Welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name's George Isted. I'm the Solent Boat Butler. This is a Contessa 32 that I'm sitting on. It's from the mid 70s. It is with me for a fairly extensive refit. This is Project Lottie. If you've been following the series, this is the next instalment or part two of my bits and bobs video. Um, in the last week's video, I said I was going to make a video about bits and bobs because sometimes you just have a project where you haven't got anything really big to do, but you've got lots of little small jobs. And so I thought, oh no, I'll just do an episode and I'll call it Bits and Bobs. Well, it turns out there were quite a lot more Bits and Bobs than I had originally planned. So this is part two of Bits and Bobs. Enjoy. Back on Lottie and all this paint that I put on yesterday has gone off it's cured so um, that's all dry i'm going to come back in now and put a second coat all over and then once that is done i'll be able to start thinking about maybe removing some of the varnish i've got some u-bolts to go back in so drill holes fit u-bolts there fit the stanchion back in up there fit a u-bolt up there with a backing plate um, there's loads of work to do but less talking, more painting. Now I'm not going to record the painting, there is only so much internet to go around and I don't want to waste it with more painting, so I'm going to crack on, do less talking, do more working, and I'll see you afterwards. And there we have that second coat of white Belgian locker paint inside all the lockers. It's really covered in super nicely, looking great. First coat was looking very, very patchy. It's very tempting to put a third coat on. I haven't decided yet. I think I'm gonna see what it looks like tomorrow once it's done, once it's all cured. Um, it probably, I'm not gonna say it needs it. I think it might be a good idea to have it because um, it just gives a bit more material on there if it needs to be scrubbed clean at some point in the future. But um, it's looking good. Unfortunately, it's raining outside now. I had planned to do some gel coat repairs outside, but as you can see on the window there, oh no, you can't see because of the light. It is raining, it's not very pleasant. So um, I think I'm going to head back to uh, SBB HQ and uh, do some paperwork. Welcome back. Today is a new day on Lottie. I have been busily working away the last couple of days without doing any filming at all. So um, sometimes, you know, this is my job. I just sometimes have to crack on and get on and do it and not mess about with cameras. But I do try and take pictures and little clips of videos along the way so I can talk about the stuff that I have been up to over the last couple of days. So. Um, Internally, I think I filmed the first coat of white paint going on in all the lockers that aren't being flow coated. That's now had its second coat of paint and looks really nice and tidy. I was considering putting a third coat on, but I think it kind of looks okay. So I'm just gonna um, leave it a little while to really go hard um, and then maybe have a chat with the owner, see if he wants me to put a third coat on. But in reality, I think it's good enough for getting along with. Um, and the longer I, wait for more and more coats the more it pushes the um, other jobs back that I need to be getting on with so talking about those other jobs whilst the paint has been drying and whilst I've been unable to do some stuff internally whilst paint dries I have been getting on with some jobs outside so I think I mentioned that I need to do some gel coat repairs on the deck so up on deck um, you've got the hull kind of comes up then you've got the deck that comes up and then there's a little upstand and then on top of that upstand is the teak tow rail. The teak tow rails are all off because it's getting new teak tow rails all the way around and that sun has just come out from behind the cloud and it's really quite bright. Um, on that upstand, there are quite a lot of um, little cracks, damages um, that needed repairing. Now, they're kind of not going to be super obvious once the new tow rail's back on, but they really did look unsightly. It's where screws have been put through to hold the old tow rails, and sometimes the screws haven't gone through the middle of the upstand, and they've been off to one side, and they've broken through on the deck side of the boat. Um, and uh, I'll put some pictures in, but um, it really didn't look particularly nice in a lot of places. So I've started grinding back on some of those uh, areas. I probably started doing that about four or five days ago. 
filling those areas and then I have got some color match gel coat already for doing some other repairs on the boat so I was able to um, put some gel on that give it a sand and then I've actually gone back and then put another gel coat um, layer on top of that which is going to be the the finished product now ideally I should go back and wet sand that and I will do that at some point but for now it kind of looks tidy and I've got lots of other things I want to get on with so the other things that I've been wanting to do is I took the two stanchion bases off in the middle of the boat and I've put new backing plates on which I think I covered in an earlier video this is the problem with me recording stuff I don't always remember what I've recorded and then I found out in the edit I'm not very organized I'm, I'm sure if I was doing this full time I'd have to plan things a bit more properly like a proper production thing um, in reality I just record stuff as I'm doing it and then kind of hope it all comes together in the edit. So that's why if you think I'm jumping around a little bit, that's why, because I don't plan these things. I do have to do a day job. Um, anyway, uh, what was I talking about? The stanchion bases came off on the port side. There were lots of cracks and damages around the stanchion base on deck. So I have repaired that. And also around the uh, shroud U-bolts, um, also known as the chain plates, although they're not plates on this boat, they're U-bolts. Um, the lowers had a number of cracks around it where the deck has flexed very slightly. The laminate is absolutely fine, it's just the gel coat itself is quite easily cracked. Um, it doesn't flex in the same way that the laminate does. Uh, so I've ground out around those little star cracks filled those little cracks uh, and then once that's all been sanded back flat and cleaned up I've then put a layer of gel coat over the entire kind of little pad which is about two and a half inches by one and a half inches um, that the aft and forward lower shroud u-bolts go on and they look really tidy now I'm quite pleased with that which means that today I can drill and fit the new u-bolts I'll show you them in a minute. Um, the new U-bolts will get fitted with a very large, big backing plates. So that issue of the deck flexing uh, will have gone away effectively. These early boats, the backing pads that they put on were not huge, um, which caused that flexing. Um, it's not a major issue. As I said, it's not a structural problem for the boat, but it's just unsightly. So nice big backing plaids, and then you know you're all good. The other th reason for changing the U-bolts um, on the forward and aft lowers is the original ones fitted to these boats back in the 70s were straight, and the new ones that you can buy now from Jeremy Rogers Limited, or you can get them made by your chosen um, manufacturer, um, is you can get them cranked. So you can get them in line with the load of the... Um, uh, rigging that is going to be pulling on it and that's a much better engineering solution for your u-bolts um, I think I've already talked in an earlier video about the cap shroud u-bolts this boat had the original u-bolts that had a round bar that went through the knee that's below deck and that round bar has a tendency to point load the nuts and so uh, one mod is to machine a flat on that round bar but actually a better solution is to fit brand new u-bolts after 50 odd years um, invested in a new bit of shiny jewellery for the boat um, with a new round bar with uh, which can be fitted lower down that knee because the new U-bolts from Jeremy Rogers have longer legs uh, and it's just all round a much better, nicer solution and kind of future-proofs the boat for many years to come. Anyway, what else have I been doing? So on the bottom, um, there was one patch of... Uh, hull under the starboard aft cradle pad that um, had had the full osmosis treatment and everything like that but I ran out of time to put the barrier coat the high protect barrier coat on there so yesterday I got some wooden shores in around that pad took the pad out on the cradle dropped the pad down wound it back in um, so that I can now get to that um, that area there. So yesterday that had its first coat of high protect and today it will get a second coat and it will get two more further coats on top of that. So normally with high protect you put three coats on. I'm putting four on this boat because it gives me a little bit of material that when I come to putting the final anti-fouling on, which we think is going to be copper coat, I can just buzz over the whole area just to flat it back, get rid of any kind of brush strokes in the surface and I'm not worried about um, eating into that barrier coating um, too much. 
So that's been done. Uh, I've also done a little bit of filling and fairing on the outside of the boat. Uh, you might say, why have I done that when I've done a full osmosis treatment? Well, it was around the two aft seacocks, which are um, new, new old Blakes that were fitted. They just needed a little bit of um, a fill around the fixing holes. So I did that, but whilst I was at it, I also started fairing in the new seacock for the engine because I fitted a true design seacock on the bottom and um, it's a more modern uh, seacock design with a, an outer flange. So um, because race boat, um, I've started fairing uh, that in a little bit just to hide that bump so it's a little bit of a smoother surface for the water to flow over. Um, I've done lots of odds and sods to be honest with you. Um, there's, uh, well, I did call this video the odds and sods video I think. I can't remember what I said at the start but um, it's bits and bobs. That's it. I said bits and bobs. Um, so I've been doing lots of bits and bobs. I'm going to continue doing lots of bits and bobs. Today's plan is to get the forward and aft lower shrouds um, on. Sorry, the, the shroud U-bolts and I need to put another coat of high protect on and I want to go to the workshop and give the bunk boards a rub down and give them their first coat of the rubbed effect varnish um, and I might start taking some of the internal doors off because they can then go to the workshop and be stripped and revarnished. Um, there's loads of stuff so I'm just going to be bouncing around, come along for the ride and uh, we'll see where we get to. Now it's a lovely sunny day out there, which means the light's streaming in through there, so hopefully this looks okay on the camera. This is one of the new shroud U-bolts bought from Jeremy Rogers Limited over in Lymington. They will build you a brand new Contessa if you want. They also do some fantastic refit work. So um, people sometimes think, oh, you must be in competition with Jeremy Rogers. And I'll go, well, yes, I am, and no, I'm not. Um, I'm a very different operation. Um, they're great guys, they do fantastic work over there. So, um, you know, if you want to buy a new boat, if you want to refit, I would highly recommend them. I am just one person, there's only so much bandwidth that I have, um, but uh, I also do uh, small jobs and larger refits like this one as well. Anyway, um, these came from Jamie Rogers. As you can see, they are cranked, so they're not straight. Um, and that means that that loading that's put on it from the shroud is kind of all in line. So um, that is going to go in up there and whilst I was at it I've got some great big backing plates. Now I am going to have to chop these down to make them fit um, where I'm going to be fitting them up there because if you recall I also put a big backing plate in there for the stanchion base and that is very close to where this is going to be so I'm probably just going to have to chop this off very slightly maybe like that um, but compared to the backing plate that was on there there wasn't one um, this is going to do the job very nicely right in terms of drilling the holes what I tend to do is I take the little stainless backing plate off of the u-bolt this thing here. So in terms of drilling the holes on deck, what I will do is use the little stainless steel smaller backing plate that comes with the U-bolt and um, I'll put that on deck and then I've got a drill guide effectively for drilling the holes, which um, just makes everything super easy. The legs on this are almost certainly too long and will hang down beyond where the headlining piece is that uh, goes up there. So I'm going to dry fit everything, pop it in with the backing plate, and uh, then I can see how much I need to chop off these legs just to make a nice, neat job. The other thing I'm going to be doing is, because this goes through kind of at a slight angle on deck because there's a tiny little raised area on the deck that this fits on. Um, that's going to go on there. It might go through a very slight angle compared to the underside of the deck and also the underside of the deck is somewhat undulating um, and so that this backing pad has um, a nice contact area with the underside of the hull what I tend to do is put a load of um, polyester filler on this which um, I can then put it all together, squidge it up, a little bit of the filler will come out, but it means that this 
whole surface is fully in contact with the underside of the deck. So you're not putting any kind of point loadings on the deck because it's at a slight angle or there's lumps on the deck that you're pressing against. Um, it solves that problem. It's the right and best way to go about it. So here is one of those pads that's had its kind of re-gel over the top of it. And I can just about make out what one of the old holes was just there. So if I stick this kind of in the middle, so it's all kind of equal about somewhere there. I'm going to go through initially with, I think this is a four mil. I can chuck a couple of holes in the middle. Really need a vacuum cleaner. Do stick this in and. That looks good. Right, I'm going to go down below and look at the backing plate and how much I need to chop off that to make it fit. That's it all kind of dry fitted. You can see that's touching at the back there, but there's a bit of a gap at the front here. And uh, I've currently got this uh, plate at 90 degrees to the U-bolt legs, which is what I want. So you can see the gap that I'm gonna end up filling with filler um, is in there. So um, what I'm gonna do is quickly measure how much thread I've got there. Looks like about 15 mil. So I'm gonna quickly take that off. So I'll probably cut 10 mil off those legs just so they're no longer than necessary. Uh, and then I'm gonna wrap some tape or something around the legs, put the legs back through, and then I'm gonna bond this piece to the underside of the deck. Um, having some packing tape or, uh, or, or masking tape on the legs should stop it from sticking, the goo will stop the goo from sticking to the legs. I can then pull the U-bolt back out uh, and then cover it in sealant, pop it back in, do the nuts up, uh, and then she's all done. And uh, then I've got to rinse and repeat for another three U-bolts. There we go, that has got all six cap shroud U-bolts in place. That's the starboard side and over to the port side, there's the other three. So, what am I gonna do next? Um, I could do with doing some filling on the bottom and that requires a bit of sanding first. It's spitting with rain out here, unfortunately, so I'm disinclined to drill those holes there and do the work needed to fit the stanchion which is removed and currently kind of just wobbling around on deck there. Um, so yeah I'm going to go and hide under the boat out of the rain. Before I go down below and do some sanding here's a really good example of why that filling is required behind the backing plate. So you can see how it's kind of like a wedge of filler just to bring the surface up to a flat and even and perpendicular to the bolts um, surface. So that is why I do it. And once that's all painted, it will look factory fresh. That's what I've just been sanding. So I put a bit of fill on that yesterday whilst I was filling around the seacock over there, which definitely needs another fill because it's kind of sagged. So I've given it a sand back and I'll put a second one on there. It will probably need a third as well, but it's all coming together. And then in a minute, I'll put the second coat of High Protect Barrier coat on there.
Here's another one of those bits and bobs jobs. These are the washboards of Lottie. So I've just laid them on top of a sheet of plywood having removed the lock so that I can draw around them and make up a replacement temporary washboard or what may in fact become like a winter washboard so the owner can slip it in over the winter and then look after his nice shiny varnished washboards once they are stripped and revarnished and keep them looking nice. Um, but I obviously need something to go in the hole whilst I strip and revarnish them. So I might as well make something nice that he can use going forward. So I'm just gonna draw in those and then cut them out and uh, then they can be kind of sealed in some way. I might coat them in resin or possibly paint them or varnish them. I'll see what he wants me to do. And then he has something to use going forward. Well, I am back in the clean, or not very clean at the moment, room here at the workshop because these bunk boards have had two coats of varnish on both sides. So I'm going to give them a very quick rub down. I've got a little foam block here and some 400 grit. Uh, this is Merca um, sanding mesh again. Um, I really like them as I have probably mentioned before. Uh, other sanding options are available of course. Um, so quick wipe down just to denib it or just to take down any little high spots and then it's going to get its first Possibly it's only, I'm going to see how it looks, but um, certainly it's first coat of the rubbed effect Epiphanes varnish that is going to be the finished surface on these because we're going um, silk or rubbed effect on most of the boat uh, and then maybe we'll pick out some of the bits in the boat with a bit of gloss light around doors and things like that just to um, kind of punch it up and make it look nice, but we shall see. Um, right, less talking, more sanding. that first coat of rubbed effect. Now it doesn't look like rubbed effect because it's still wet but uh, you're just going to have to take my word for it. That may look exactly the same as earlier but once that dries that'll go to a kind of a nice warm satin look to it. So I'm going to go and cut out that piece of wood that is outside in the dirty part of the workshop and that is going to be then taken back to the boat and I can troll fit that as the washboard um, infill or temporary washboard and uh, then I think it's going to be calling it a daytime because it's five o'clock now and it is Friday. It's the dawn of another day it's about quarter to eight on a Saturday and this is the next thing I'm going to tackle so I put some gel coat around this a couple of days ago I've given it a wipe down with acetone um, because it was a little bit sticky despite putting some wax in it um, but it needs a bit of a wet sand just to get this all nicely finished. So here you can see the area that got wet sanded this morning. So the stanchion base is also back on there now. So that's all done apart from I didn't have any polish to give it a final kind of polish up to make it shiny. But to be honest with you, all that upstand is fairly dull. So um, 
it doesn't really show up at the moment. Um, back here, between the two stanchion bases, I ended up having so many little repairs there, it just didn't look very good. So I've ended up actually sanding all that back between the two stanchions there. And that has all had three coats of gel coat as well because I just wasn't very happy with it. And there's a lot of cracks in here around this scupper. So I ground them out and I filled them with gel coat and then the whole thing's been gelled three times. And that looks quite nice actually, just as it is. Um, but if you run your fingers over it, you can feel there's kind of ridges in there just from the paint brush that I used. Um, so I'm gonna come back in and sand that now just to finish that bit off. So I will start with some 240 and then some 400 dry uh, and then I'll move to wet and dry and go through 6, 800, 1000, 1200 until that is all super smooth and nice and then it'll just need a polish and then that's it all done. The other thing I did was repair a small area at the back. So back here on the port quarter there was also a lot of damage which I had repaired and filled kind of in there and this area had been re-gelled in the past. In fact, you can see two different colors of gel there and then the stuff that I've put on as well, which I think is a better color match. Um, so again, that needs a little wet sand just to finish it. So uh, I will get on with that as well. It's now the next day. I didn't get to finish that little bit of gel work up there because I ran out of time yesterday and this morning I've had a very pleasant trip down the river to go and look at a Contessa 26 to inspect it for the owner and give him a few um, thoughts on some questions that he has. Um, I'm now back to finish the gel coat repair up on deck but it occurred to me that I can't remember if I've talked about the process that I go through to refinish the new gel that has been applied. Once I've got the gel coat on, um, the process I go through is to give it an initial sand, which is to just flat down the surface. So it will quite often have little ripples and, and um, defects in the surface, just because you know, you're rolling or painting on the gel coat. And uh, I will give it an initial sand with probably something like 120 grit, 180 grit, something like that, just to knock it back flat. At that stage, I then want to refine that surface and every process of sanding, I am removing the previous scratches from the previous sanding. Uh, and to make sure I get rid of all the um, scratches, I try and use a guide coat of something to um, show up where those scratches are and then I keep sanding until they're all gone. Uh, you can buy expensive guide coats. Some people will spray on um, some spray paint or something like that. Uh, you can get some very fine powders that you can dab on the surface and smush about. Um, another way of doing it, which I was taught, is to use a marker pen, a Sharpie pen, permanent marker. Uh, and what I do is I just draw on the surface a little bit uh, and then I get a rag with some acetone on it and I wipe that around and that pushes the um, pen mark all into those tiny little scratches and then I can come in and do the next layer of sanding until all those scratches have gone and I basically rinse and repeat as I go through the different grades. So I've got the uh, sanding up there done to 400 grit which is this stuff which is you know, reasonably fine. Um, it's as fine as you would go if you were refinishing uh, some varnish or some paint on the surface. So there's some um, 400 there. So I'm going to go up there now and put some marker pen on and I'll show you that in a minute and then come back in, I'll sand it with 600 and then I'll redo it again with the marker pen, do it at 800, marker pen again, do it at 1000, uh, I might do it again at 1500 um, but to be honest with you, once you get to 1000 grit, if you go to a coarse um, rubbing compound, uh, you can then machine polish or hand polish up and that will get rid of the last of the scratches out of it. Um, I'll see, if I've got some 1200, I might do it at 1200. We'll see what's in the van. So I'm gonna go and crack on with that and I'll show you the process in a few little clips along the way.
back here at the stern is another one of those bits and bobs jobs I was talking about. There's this thing, which is really, really ugly and covered in sealant. So um, it's just a cable gland, um, but we don't really want a cable gland there. And uh, I don't know if there's going to be a big hole under there, a small hole or what, but I'm going to go investigating because it's a nice dry day. So if I need to do some outdoorsy laminating stuff, the rain is not going to stop me. extremely limited access to the other side of this because it's um, not just inside the stern locker but it's inside and kind of above and behind the stern locker um, so I can just about get to it but not well enough to really do a load of laminating in there. If I do a load of laminating on the outside I'm gonna have to remove quite a long piece of quite a lot of material around there so that doesn't really fill me full of joy um, what I think I'm going to do is cut up a piece of that pre-made laminate and put a big piece underneath and glue it up underneath um, and then fill it and then do a very small laminate repair on the top here. Fortunately this is an area that doesn't get really stood on very often so its strength is not super super important and I think with a big backing piece on the back and a little bit of laminate a bit of uh, glass laid up in there I can put enough strength back into that that it will be fine joy deep joy well I have been to the workshop cut out a square of glass brought that square of glass back and now bonded it back there now I couldn't record the bonding of that because when I went to go and get that, I also left my phone behind in the workshop. But never mind, I've now got it again. Up above, there we go, that's what it looks like. So what I'm going to do next is just grind away at the top here so that I can lay up some glass and then we have a nice strong repair again. I don't like repairing it in this way with a kind of a big backing pad, but it will give plenty of strength there. And um, I think that's going to be more than strong enough for the location in which it is. So, um, so yeah, that's what's going to happen. decided to just gel over this whole square and it's just going to be finished flat at the moment um, just because I want to get it done but what I might do is come back at a later date just grind back that gel a little bit take a mold off this non-slip and then use that mold to put some non-slip back onto there but I'm not doing that for now because there's a chance that we might be mounting something back in here and it means I'm not doing a load of work for no reason at all so just catalyze this so I need to get it on fill that surface up and 
as you can see behind me, some of these windows are now out, which is the subject of a separate video yet to be finished, but I'm still on bits and bobs for this video, so I just thought I'd show you one other little job that I want to do. I'll just flip the camera around. So looking around the headlining, you can see there are lots and lots of little holes all over the headlining, which don't look very pretty. Um, they are kind of everywhere where there's been old curtain tracks and what have you up. So I'm going to go round and start filling some of those so that uh, they disappear. Now, they might not be perfectly, absolutely 100% gone, but I'm just going to do a quick field job on all of those whilst I'm waiting for some other stuff to cure, which is for a separate video, which I can't talk about because I'll give the game away. Now, in terms of prep on these little holes all over, a lot of them are raised and the gel coat's cracked and what have you. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with my drill and it's got a little countersink bit on it. And I'm just gonna open it up very slightly and I'm just doing it gently. And that does two things. One, it gives me more surface area for the new gel coat to adhere to. And secondly, it kind of cleans up all the edges and the, the cracked original gel coat that is there. So I'm just gonna go around and Give these all a little whiz if necessary. I might come in with my little um, uh, Dremel to open them up a touch as well, but hopefully most of these I can just do with my little whizzer on here. I'm just gonna do that one a little bit more. That one has been filled, but I'm gonna come and do that one again. That's had a little fill in it. This looks a right mess here. Just open that up a little bit. There's a horrible one there. Might need to come in with the Dremel on that one. And then, I don't know if I'm still in shot. Hopefully I am. Oh, I am, there we go. There's another one here. Another one here. And a little one there. And a little one there. There we go, right. Now I've got to do that on all the holes, on all the headlining. So what I have here, if you can just see that, is some white gel coat uh, or gel coat filler, which I've just mixed up and I'm catalyzed and I'm going to use one of my little tongue depressor mixing sticks, which I've broken off and I've got a nice pointy end and I can just dab that in there and then get it in all the little holes. But I've got to crack on with this because it's all catalyzed and it'll start going off. So I'm just gonna swing the camera around and see if I can do it without knocking the camera over. So um, I'm gonna overfill all these little holes with this gel coat filler. And Hopefully my hand is not in the way of the camera so you can see what I'm doing. It's quite difficult to get it in and get it to kind of stay without it falling off. Some of these might need two fills. We shall see. I'll get the excess off there and then stick it in there. I've mixed up far more of this than I can actually get on in the time available, I suspect. I won't worry about the dirt that's around the hole because when I come back to finishing it off, I'll remove that when it gets wet sanded. Right, I'm gonna switch the camera off and carry on off camera and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. It's now another day and I've been busily working away on another part of the boat, but whilst I am waiting for some more gel coat to cure elsewhere, I thought I'd come back and have a look at all these little nubbins and these little bits that I filled the other day. So next I need to remove all the excess material here. Now you could go straight at that with some sandpaper, but the danger of doing that is that you would need to use something coarse to get through it and um, you'll end up scratching the gel coat around the area. So I use 
a little blade like this. So these are the replaceable snap-off blades that you would have in a knife. You know, one of those ones that kind of extend. If I had one here, I would show you, but I'm sure you know the sort of thing. And I use it as a little scraper. It's like a um, cabinet scraper, actually. And I'm going to come back in. I'm going to have to turn myself around. In fact, I'm going to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing, because I'm slowly learning how to do this YouTubing thing. Um, if you want to show someone something, make sure that the thing you're trying to show them is in the viewfinder of the camera. So I shall remove a few items and move the camera over there. And what I'm going to do is get my blade. I'm going to use this little bit as an example. And you kind of hold it flat to the surface and remove the excess like this. And it's the quickest way to do it, I find. The trick is I've got to look at what I'm doing, not look at the camera. And eventually I'll get to the stage where I'm either at or ideally just before getting into the original gel coat. You can see I'm getting there. Don't mind the other dirt that's around this, that will come off when I wet sand it. Now sometimes you get to a stage where you've been doing it in that direction and you want to turn it and actually start coming out the other direction which is going to be difficult for me because I'm trying to show you on the camera what I'm doing but I'm sure you get the idea. Now these blades do get blunt reasonably quickly so you find if you've worked on the middle bit of the blade there I end up having to kind of move myself up the blade slightly sometimes just to get back to some sharper a sharper bit of the blade as you get a finer finish the sharper the blade right that bit there is now ready for a wet sand right i have got a bit of used 800 but it's still got some bite in it and some 1200 grit so i'm just going to give that a little wipe over with some 800 and try not to get water over the stuff that's below it. It's only a really small area so I'm trying not to trying not to sand down the area around it. Just sand the area that's on it. There we go. That's 800. Give it a wipe. Do the 1200. Tiny little sand. And okay, you can just about see the halo of where the old hole was there. But by the time you stand back a bit, and by the time that's polished up, I'll get a bit of polishing compound in a bit and give that a polish it will be virtually indistinguishable that repair from the uh, area around the outside and this dirt also fortunately cleans off quite easily with a bit of 1200. There was obviously something mounted here at some point and sometimes if it won't come off by just cleaning or with acetone a little bit of 1200 grit and it goes away. There. How's that? Um, not bad, I think. Needs a compound, but it'll do. Unfortunately, I've got an awful lot of these little things to do on this boat. So one, two, three here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen on the window next to it. So there's probably about sixty of these that I've got to do. And I'm not going to record them all because I'll save you the boredom. Anyway. Onwards and upwards. I forgot to say, if you are enjoying this, if you're learning something from my little uh, jobs that I show, do feel free to buy me a beer. There's a link down in the description 
below this video. You can go down there, there's a link to a PayPal account, and you can donate a few pounds to refit and sale, which helps pay for these expensive microphones that I use. You see that thing there? Um, jolly expensive microphone. I've also just bought a new action camera, so I plan to do some sailing soon, and uh, I'm going to use that for some of the sailing stuff I'm going to do, because this channel is called Refit and Sail, apparently. So, um, uh, yes, yeah, so if you want to support the show, you can do so. You can buy me a beer, or you can buy me um, something more expensive, if you like. Some people do. Um, but uh, if you have donated, thank you very, very much. It really is appreciated, and uh, it helps me fund this channel, because I'm trying to keep it cost neutral. I don't want it to cost me any money, uh, and at the moment it is. But any donations are very, very welcome and very much appreciated. Thanks very much. Well, I'm bouncing around different jobs again because I'm waiting for some gel coat to go off over there, which is for a different video to this video. Um, you'll remember I re-gel coated an area of the deck, which then got sanded and prepped, but I didn't quite finish it because I hadn't done the polishing. So this area down here, I'm going to move the camera, is now this area all in here where I re-gel coated this upstand all needs a bit of a polish so I'm going to give it a, um, a bit of a rub with some finishing compound um, which should make it all nice and shiny and just remove those last kind of scratches in the surface that were from the 1200 or so um, 1200 grit I think I used to finish it off with so um, I'm just going to do it by hand I normally machine polish but it's such a difficult area to get into bit of microfiber and give it a polish. Now I did give this all a wipe down before I started because it's been a number of days since I did this gel coating and the deck had picked up grit and dirt from just being in the yard and being walked on so I don't want that grit getting into the polishing um, cloth so it has all been wiped down to give it a clean but I'll give it one go with this all over and I'll see how it looks and then it might need a second go. It's not as efficient doing it by hand as it is doing it by machine but kind of difficult to get my big whizzy machine in here to do it and it shouldn't take too long doing it by hand anyway. I can already see that looks quite shiny actually. I don't know if it's showing on camera or not. I'm going to do around the base of the stanchion. There's always a bit of a question about how much effort you put into little things like this that will never get noticed, but it kind of goes with the overall effect of the boat and the overall looking nice and tidy and up together so sometimes if you do all the little bits then you never really have to worry about the overall big picture <laughs> to some extent it would have been nice to get all these stanchions off and re-chromed because they were originally chromed um, but uh, I don't think that's on the jobs list for for this particular refit um, there's enough money been spent so I think we can live with these for now well I'm not sure that the camera really picks it up but you're just gonna have to take my word for it that is kind of shiny now um, it's just it's so light out here that everything is getting super overexposed so that bit there is finished well folks, it has been a marathon of bits and bobs. I'm in the edit for this video now and I've realised quite how much material I have got. So um, this is going to be quite a long one. Well done if you managed to sit all the way through this, um, well, however long it is. I haven't quite cut it down enough yet and at the moment it's well over an hour. Um, if you've enjoyed watching this, do press the like button down below, the thumbs up button. I really appreciate that. And if you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button as well, because that helps me grow the channel and I really, really appreciate it. There's also that link down in the description that I won't mention it again because someone got upset about me begging for money in a previous episode. And as you can see, I'm talking to you from a somewhat unusual angle. And this is a clue as to what I'm doing in a future episode. It may not be the next episode. I haven't decided yet. Anyway, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.